So we have a function like that, xy, and it's cubic root of xy. And the question is, is it differentiable in the or at the origin? It's a continuous function, so we, can, we no longer can use this blunt tool from the slide before. It's a continuous function. We can just reject differentiability on the continuous, continuity grounds. So we have to make a further investigation. So first, I need to come up with the Jacobian matrix. I need to compute the partial derivatives. Here I do it by definition. That's a definition of the first partial derivative, right? I take the 0, 0 point. I increment first, first variable. I divide by the amount of increment. I, I hit some computations by the dots, but there isn't much of a computation state because as soon as you take one of the variables zero, the function will be constantly zero. So actually, this dose not supposed to be here because I'm not hiding anything. <coughs> yes. Um, yeah, just because this is a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll fix that. Yeah, it's supposed to be zero, of course. Thank you. Uh, similar argument works for the second partial derivative and similar type of present in the second partial derivative. <laughs> yeah. Again, because the function is constantly zero when you take x equals zero, just, just right from the formula, it is zero. So we do have a Jacobian matrix. That's a Jacobian matrix of my function at the point zero. And that's a natural choice for the L matrix when we start testing for differentiability. So now I start testing for different differentiability. Here's my test. Right from the definition of differentiability. I have to test whether this is zero. Whether this limit is zero. This requires some thinking and testing. So remember, x bold x. It's my vector of x, y components. And yesterday, one of you came to me and told me what's the double bar around the vector is. That's what the double bar around the vector is. Distance function, or the length, or the norm of that vector. So I'm just substituting everything I have. Uh, f of 0, 0, right from here. This term disappears, because my suggestion for the L matrix is 0. Here will be just the sum of the squares of x and y. And instead of f of x, I replace my function. So here's a substitution of everything we have into my formula. I'm trying to see if it's correct or not. And this is the kind of questions you've done a few times this week in the tutorials, right? What your intuition by now tells you? Can you justify such a limit? Or is it not? a correct limit. Well, one of the tricks you may try right here, right now, the tricks which you tried in the tutorials, the trick with tricks which we tried uh, during lecture classes last week, is we can try a few directions and see if every, every of such direction delivers zero. Here, I'm trying a few directions. So just for the brevity, I can introduce a name for this function because I don't want to copy this all the time. So I call it the g of x g of x, y, sorry, this function, numerical function of two variables. And now I can try horizontal approach, one on n. Well, it's a very easy approach. This approach will deliver zero limit, right? Because y is zero, y is zero. Just the enumerator will be zero constantly. That's, the That's why the limit will be zero. But if I try bisectorial approach, something which helped us at least once last week and probably helped you a few times during your tutorial exercises. If I try by sectorial approach, it finishes the question straight away. Look at this. If I try by sectorial, if I substitute here x equal y and I take a sequence one on n for that, that's the, that's the formula. That's the expression which will come up in here for the g of x, y. And this no longer goes to zero. Right? If you, if you cancel out n, oops, sir. If you cancel out n powers, that's how it will be. It will be plus infinity. That's why this limit cannot possibly exist. Not all, forget about being zero or anything else. It, it doesn't exist in the first place. Because we found two different approaches to the limiting point zero, which deliver different values as a limit. One of them actually delivered non-existing limit. <laughs> 